and we're here in Santiago in the Plaza de la Ciudadanía. Ciudadanía. Anyway, it's right across the street from La Moneda, the presidential palace of Santiago, of Chile. And we're here because right here in this plaza, two gentlemen, statues, two gentlemen who we have talked about uh, before in videos. Uh, specifically in our video about the uh, Masons and uh, our video at the um, Historical Museum. And these guys, well, they deserve their own video. And that is Bernardo O. Higgins, Jose Miguel de Carrera. These two are basically considered the founding fathers of uh, the Chilean Republic. They both commanded armies during the fight for independence from the Spanish and they did not get along with each other. Well, these two guys, they deserve their own video. So, let's do it. Come along. So we're here in Estacion Central, Central Train Station of Santiago, as you can see behind me. Today, we're gonna go out to Rancagua. Rancagua, the site of the famous Rancagua disaster where Bernardo Higgins and his army and also Jose Miguel de Carrera and his army were defeated by the Spanish in uh, 1814 and then they had to come back over the Andes and, uh, and go back and try it again. So we're here in Rancagua. The train station's right back there behind those trees. So we're coming up I think on the, uh, the main square. Definitely want to check out Los Heroes, the uh, Plaza, Plaza de Heroes. But while we're on our walk here, on the way, we can talk a little bit about, uh, <laughs> about the, uh, the complicated relationship between the two founding fathers of Chile, Bernardo Higgins and uh, Jose Miguel Carrera. So, kind of it's kind of an interesting story and it goes back even to before the war for independence so Carrera was uh, basically president of Chile before Chile was an independent republic if that makes sense so like he was he was in charge of Chile the president regional president here but it was still a Spanish colony so still beholden to the king however uh, Carrera had wanted, wanted, basically wanted independence from the king for Chile, wanted independence from Spain. And the thing with Carrera is he did a lot of things before the War of Independence that are really notable for, uh, for the country of Chile. Most specifically, he, uh, he drafted the Constitution of 1812. The Constitution of 1812 was um, was a very, for the time, liberal constitution that basically attempted to set up like a um, uh, a constitutional monarchy, right? A parliament here that would control things in Chile that would really have all the power, but they would recognize that the king of Spain is still the king of Spain. So that's pretty progressive for the time. For 1812, that's pretty forward thinking. And normally in a situation like this, if something like that happened, the uh, Spanish Empire would send troops to quell the rebellion. Uh, but they were in the middle of fighting the Napoleonic Wars. And uh, they were a little busy at that point. But it didn't take them long, because after the Napoleonic Wars were over, they did send uh, a military force down here to uh, to sort of quell the rebellion. And that is really when it kicked off here in Chile. Now, I've mentioned in some previous videos that the like Latin American and South American wars for independence were not, uh, they were not very clean cut. There were all kinds of different factions vying for power. After independence from Spain, there were decades of civil war uh, when those factions tried to uh, assert power and take over territories here in Latin America and South America. That's definitely the case in Chile, for sure. In fact, even before uh, the wars for independence, there were coups here in Chile, and that's actually how um, 
um, Jose Miguel Carrera took power, was in a coup. Now, Carrera was also known because he, uh, he started, he created the army, basically, the, what was an army uh, of a Spanish colony before the independence, which later became the Chilean army. So those are kind of the things that he's, he's known for, that he's famous for, but the story, let me tell you, the story between him and, uh, and O'Higgins and Jose de San Martin, who you gotta remember, if you remember from our video about the Masons, uh, Jose de San Martin and Bernardo O'Higgins, they, they were buddies. They formed a uh, Masonic lodge or a Masonic inspired lodge to uh, discuss and plan independence from the Spanish. So they had ties, they were friends. And that's actually gonna be quite important a little bit later in the story. And the reason we came to visit here, Rancagua specifically, is because this is the site of a uh, disastrous defeat for the Chilean Patriotic Army. What happened here essentially was after a series of victories, O'Higgins with his army and Carrera with his, they, uh, they fought the Spanish here in Rancagua. And O'Higgins and his army uh, retreated into the city and were trapped here in sea, uh, under siege by the Spanish. You can see a monument here. Monument here, Desparacio Ahora La Muerte. And interestingly, the two, the two flags here, the Chilean flag that we recognize, of course, the Republic of Chile, but that flag over there, that's like the very, very early flag of the Republic of Chile, which was actually designed by Jose Miguel Carrera. Anyway, we'll take a look at this statue here. So Higgins and his men were trapped here in the city and there was a lot of miscommunication between his army and Carreras. There was a lot of, uh, like, the two wanted to take different tactics, so there was a lot of indecision between the two on how they would best handle the situation. And when push came to shove, on the second day of the battle, when O'Higgins requested um, aid from Carrera in the form of uh, support and ammunition and things like that, Carrera decided not to do that. Now in the video we made about the Masons, uh, we found out that, well, we think pretty definitively that Jose de San Martin, Bernardo O'Higgins, and Jose Miguel Carrera were all Masons. But from what I've read, and from what I understand, uh, Jose de San Martin and Bernardo O'Higgins were either from a different lodge than Carrera or a different faction, like within the same lodge. Either way, it's important to remember that there was a split between Bernardo O'Higgins and Jose de San Martin and Jose Miguel Carrera and his brothers, Luis Carrera and uh, Juan Jose Carrera? No. Yeah, Juan Jose Carrera. I got it right. There was a split, and it's important to remember that because um, in the future, it's going to be very important to the story. <laughs> so after their defeat, O'Higgins and Carrera, their defeat here in Rancagua, they basically had to gather up what was left of their armies and retreat, to retreat back over the Andes to Mendoza, where Jose de San Martin was, because at that time he was, uh, he was the governor of Cujo province, Mendoza. So they retreated back over the mountains and they, uh, they still sort of maintained two different factions, two different factions that were ideologically and uh, strategically headed in different directions. And the interesting thing, or well, interesting to me at least, is that when they arrived in, uh, in Mendoza, um, Jose de San Martin, who had a previous connection with Bernardo O'Higgins, he uh, basically declared 
O'Higgins to be in charge of the Liberation Army of Chile. And uh, Jose Miguel Carrera, he had a different idea about that. He definitely wanted, he thought he was in charge of the Liberation Army of Chile. And this is where favoritism plays the role because O'Higgins was friends with San Martin, basically got put in charge, and uh, Jose Miguel Carrera got put in jail. He got imprisoned along with his brothers. And San Martin, Jose de San Martin, uh, has expressed in like some diaries and writings that he did not like the Carreras. And he thought that they were reckless. He, that's why he, he put them in prison. But through a series of events, Carreras were able to get out of prison, but they were really uh, sort of personas non gratas at that point. And they left Mendoza province, went over to Buenos Aires, at which point Jose Miguel Carrera decided to uh, try and find network and find some support for his cause, which was really the same cause as O'Higgins. They both wanted to liberate Chile, it's just that they wanted to be the one to do it. So Carrera leaves Mendoza and he goes to Buenos Aires. And he tries to hook up with Carlos Maria Alvear who actually is like, at this point, like the big boss of the United Provinces of Rio de la Plata, basically like all of Argentina. And uh, he does this because they're like old buddies. And there's a faction, uh, Alvear was uh, part of the uh, the lodge with, um, you know, the lodge, the Latardo Lodge with um, Jose de San Martin and Bernardo O'Higgins. But there's a split between Alvear and San Martin. So there's the San Martin faction, and there's the Alvear faction, and Carrera is in the Alvear faction. And he's basically trying to get um, Alvear to help him raise an army so that he can be the one to like go over and free Chile. Fortunately for, unfortunately for Carrera, Alvear was deposed and was like no longer in power in Buenos Aires after a little while after he arrived there. So it's was pretty desperate at that point, and Carrera decided to go to the United States to try to uh, drum up support for his mission. Interesting side note, when Carrera arrived in Buenos Aires, his brother, Luis, was already there, and he was in jail. Why was he in jail? Because he had killed uh, Juan McKenna, who was another member the Laterno Lodge. He had killed Juan McKenna in a uh, in a duel because uh, I don't, I'm not sure exactly why McKenna had insulted him and his brothers. I don't know. Look, this is the kind of shit that was happening back then, and this is kind of the reason why uh, Jose de San Martin maybe thought that uh, the uh, the Carrera brothers were a little bit reckless. Um, but I will say this wasn't just happening in like you know, South America and Chile and Argentina and places like that. I mean, right in the United States, my country, the United States, there was Thomas Jefferson, third president of the United States, and his vice president, Aaron Burr, and they hated each other. And Aaron Burr killed Alexander Hamilton, another one of the founding fathers of the United States, in a duel. So I guess this was just the way things happened back then. There were a bunch of, uh, aristocrats who were in charge of everything and they were like dueling each other because they felt insulted for some reason I don't know but anyway like I mentioned Carrera leaves for the United States and that well that's where the story gets really interesting but we're gonna have to continue that later after we leave Rancagua we're back here in the Plaza de la Ciudadania where the statues of our guys here in the story Bernardo O'Higgins and uh, over here, Jose Miguel Carrera stand. And I was trying to go here to the crypt, La Cripta de Libertador General Bernardo O'Higgins. Because uh, Bernardo O'Higgins, his remains are actually like right there underneath this plaza. And uh, over here, there's a memorial to uh, Chilean soldiers. A los que por la patria murieron honor y gloria for those who died for the homeland uh, 
honor and glory. But this place is closed. It's supposed to be open, according to the internet. And uh, I've been here now four times during the times that it's supposed to be open, uh, and it's closed. And I actually asked a woman who, uh, who served me a coffee at a cafe, like right next to this place, is this thing ever open? And she's like, no, that, that, that thing's never open. So um, I tried to look online if there was like, uh, you know, who's in charge of keeping it open and maintaining it and like who I would have to talk to maybe to make an appointment to see it. Um, and I best I could understand is it's actually like maintained by the Chilean army and I'm not going to be the guy who like the gringo tourist who like calls up the Chilean army to be like, hey, could you open the crypt of Bernardo O'Higgins so I can film a YouTube video there? So. That aside, I wanted to come here to continue our little story about Carrera and O'Higgins. And last, when we were talking about this, uh, also, by the way, there's a demonstration going on over here uh, about something. I don't, I don't know what, but it's kind of loud, so if you hear that in the background, that's what's going on. But anyway, when we last checked in, Carrera, having tried to uh, drum up some support from Carlos Maria Alviar and his, uh, his hombres in Buenos Aires, unable to do that. Alviar was uh, deposed as, uh, as leader in Buenos Aires, leader of the United Provinces of Rio de la Plata. And so our guy, Jose Miguel Carrera, had to go to the United States to try and drum up some support there. Now, while this is all happening, Bernardo O'Higgins is in uh, Cujo province, along with San Martin, Jose de San Martin. And they are uh, putting together the Army of the Andes, which we've talked about in previous videos. So they're raising their army there, and over in the United States, uh, Carrera is trying to raise his force. So Carrera actually had some contacts in the United States um, from when he was president of Chile before the Wars of Independence. And he used those contacts to sort of work his way up the tree of power until he actually got a meeting with James Monroe, the Secretary of State, and James Madison, the current president. Um, now, neither of them could help him because they were in the process of negotiating a deal to buy Florida from the Spanish, and they didn't want to piss off the Spanish at that very delicate time. But uh, Carrera, who actually learned to speak English in the three-month uh, like sailing trip to get over to the United States, uh, he started to make more contacts and uh, he was actually inducted into the Mason Lodge in New York and started to make contacts there. Now, when I'm talking about all of these people that, that were contacting, and I'm talking 100% about aristocrats because that is, that, that, those are the people that are involved in this story. Sure, there are soldiers who were not aristocrats who are probably in there fighting and dying, but the ones who are making all the decisions, the ones with the money to, you know, raise armies and raise navies, they're all aristocrats. So, uh, it's important to remember that. And while this was all going on, his brothers, Carrera's brothers, Luis and um, Juan Jose, I, I don't know what they were doing. They were off, you know, getting offended by insults, perceived insults and dueling with other aristocrats or something, who knows. But, uh, Jose Miguel Carrera manages in like two and a half years in the United States to raise a naval flotilla of five ships and a bunch of um, uh, like soldiers who are supporting him and they sail back across to Buenos Aires and they make port in Buenos Aires with the expectation that they are going to uh, you know be the, the that they're going to be the ones who liberate uh, who liberate Chile at this point it's like right at the time when uh, O'Higgins and San Martin and the Army of the Andes have started their march over the Andes to, to liberate Chile. So now it's a race of whose army is going to be the first to liberate Chile. And when I talk about all this stuff, it kind of seems like it's just ego um, about who, you know, who's going to be first to liberate Chile. And there definitely was a lot of ego involved, I think. But... Um, it, it should be stated that um, Mi, Mi, Jose Miguel Carrera, in some of his writings, in his diaries and things like that, he has stated that he, it was his firm belief that if O'Higgins and uh, Jose de San Martin were the ones who liberated Chile, that they would basically just set up their own monarchy here where they were the kings uh, of, um, especially San Martin, like where he would be king of the, a, new, a new kingdom here in South America. So whether he really believed that or not, and whether that was really the driving factor for him wanting to do this, who knows? But 
Uh, it should be noted that he did say that. So once Carrera docks with his uh, flotilla in Buenos Aires, uh, he is almost immediately not allowed to leave. He, they want him to uh, put his flotilla under the command of Jose de San Martin, and of course, from what we know, he is absolutely not going to do that. So he refuses to do that. They basically confiscate his uh, flotilla and he is imprisoned, um, along with his brothers, who he had met up with uh, to sort of continue their fight. So they all get imprisoned. And this is like at the crucial moment, uh, in the few months before the ultimate uh, victory of Jose de San Martin and Bernardo Higgins in the Battle of Maipu, which is uh, a part of Santiago here. It's actually one of the communes in Santiago. The story does not actually end with the victory over the Spanish in the Battle of Maipu, because like I've mentioned in some previous videos, um, the war for independence here in South America was not a clean cut thing. Uh, it was a bunch of different aristocrats with their own like private armies who were forming alliances and breaking them and uh, you know even like for example before the uh, the disastrous battle in Rancagua um, the Carrera's brothers and their armies had been fighting battles with O'Higgins and they only united uh, in, so very briefly in order to uh, to try and kick the Spanish out in 1814 when the Spanish had you know sent forces here to Chile to uh, to try and defeat the, the uprising so it was a, a basically a, a free-for-all civil war between all kinds of factions and that's the context in which we find ourselves um, after the, uh, the Battle of Maipu and after the Spanish have been ejected. There's still war happening. There's still a lot of factions fighting each other for control here in Chile and in Argentina, basically across all of South America. So San Martin and O'Higgins and their faction are officially in control, even though there are lots of other factions warring for control over different provinces and different areas of Argentina and of Chile. And during this time, Carrera and his brothers, who are separated, are off scheming their own plans to, uh, to rebel and try and take control. Now, at this point, uh, Jose Miguel de Carrera writes a manifesto. And uh, I don't know, but I will say this. Anytime you're writing a manifesto, you're going down a spiral, like a pretty bad spiral. And uh, he was spiraling pretty badly at this point. Um, and it's only going to get worse for him, to be honest. Uh, so he writes a manifesto. In this manifesto, he declares officially that his actions are not about revenge. Uh, and anytime you have to officially declare that your actions are not about revenge, your actions are probably about revenge. Uh, he did mention that in addition to, you know, wanting to liberate the people of Chile, uh, that his, uh, one of his goals was to restore his honor, which I would say that statement, I want to restore my honor, is uh, one that would uh, sort of negate the statement of this is not about personal revenge. But I don't know. Nobody really knows what was going on in his head at this time, and you can only tell from what he wrote down. So, so anyway, he writes the manifesto, and he starts uh, going around from province to province in Argentina this time to try and raise uh, enough support to build an army march across the Andes over to uh, to Santiago and, you know, depose Jose de San Martin and Bernardo Higgins and their faction from power. Uh, now, his brothers jumped the gun. They had their own plan. Not only his brothers, his sister also. They devised a plan in which they were going to do the same thing, raise an army, march over, depose O'Higgins uh, and San Martin. Their plan was wacky. It involved uh, Luis Carrera and um, uh, Juan Jose Carrera, like dressing up in disguise as different people so that they could sneak their way across. I mean, it, it, it's, it's pretty crazy at this point. Um, and their plan immediately falls apart. Basically, they make their way across Argentina. They get to Mendoza in Cujo province. For some reason, Luis picks a fight and attacks some, uh, some soldiers there. He gets... Uh, he, along with some of his, uh, some of his uh, members of his party, get arrested and imprisoned, and the party, party members immediately flip 
on everybody else and the plot is uncovered and over the next few months basically everybody gets arrested everybody uh, who was involved the two brothers and a lot of their you know higher up officers they all get arrested and eventually uh, his brothers are both executed and at that point um, Jose Miguel Herrera kind of tips over the edge and he's now uh, publicly, publicly calling out for revenge for the death of his brothers. Now, to make things even worse, if they could get worse for Jose Miguel Carrera, his father, Ignacio Carrera, who is still also an aristocrat and a politician in, uh, in Chile, uh, Bernardo O'Higgins, now this is really disrespectful, I gotta say, O'Higgins uh, basically during all of this time had banished Ignacio to uh, like some islands off the coast of Chile and now he demands that Ignacio pay the debt to the United States that Juan uh, that Jose Miguel Carrera had uh, incurred by building that fleet right that, they, that was confiscated and he also demands that Ignacio pay for the costs of the execution of Juan Jose and of Luis, his sons, uh, Miguel, Jose Miguel Carrera's brothers. So that is a level of disrespect and pettiness that you don't often see. But I will tell you, this was a time when, you know, aristocrats were dueling with each other and assassinating each other because of perceived uh, insults. So this is basically what was happening. Now, at this point, uh, it just goes completely off the rails. The factions of Jose, uh, Jose de San Martin and Bernardo Higgins, they start publishing papers that, uh, um, to f like flame uh, Carrera and his factions. And Carrera starts publishing papers to flame the, to flame the San Martin and the O'Higgins factions. It's basically the uh, you know, early 1800s version of a Twitter flame war, of course they had to publish these things, so it took a lot longer for it to develop. Um, but over the next couple years, that's what was going on, back and forth. And eventually, um, after the death of his brothers and after the disrespect to his father, um, Carrera is, has lost it at this point. He goes on a full-on warpath. He starts going from province to province, freeing Chilean prisoners and recruiting them to his side, um, meeting up with indigenous tribes and encouraging them to attack cities in Argentina and to attack uh, his enemies, basically, in Argentina. And he's fighting battles in different provinces and trying to uh, like form alliances in different provinces. And eventually, he gets to Córdoba province, where he, um, he is able to win a few battles, but ultimately uh, he's defeated, um, as he passes through Cordoba province, he's defeated in Cujo province, near Mendoza, and captured. And eventually, he was executed in Mendoza, the city of Mendoza. The execution was ordered by Tomas Godoy Cruz. And we went to Godoy Cruz, the town named after Tomas Godoy Cruz. At the time we were there, I didn't know any of this story, but uh, it's a pretty crazy story. And uh, that's how it ended for Carrera, at least. But if you can believe it, the story doesn't actually end there. Now after Carrera's death for many, many decades, even more than a century, Carrera is sort of seen not really as an important historical figure, but more like a, a historical legend, a romantic figure of the Wars of Independence. And he definitely was not seen as one of the founding fathers of Chile, of the Republic of Chile. Uh, but as the years went by, and as historians and Carrera's own family sort of uh, petitioned more and more publicly for him to be included as a founding father of Chile. Um, eventually, the government here in Chile in the 2010s, they actually uh, basically agreed that uh, 
that he was a founding father of Chile, that his contributions to Chilean history and Chilean independence are important enough that he deserves a statue right here in the plaza. And here, in the plaza, where the uh, tomb of uh, Bernardo O'Higgins is, and Bernardo O'Higgins statue is, they planted this statue of Jose Miguel Carrera in, uh, I want to say 2011 or 2012 or something like that. Very recently, very recently. So it is a very recent development that Carrera is included as a founding father of Chile. There's lots of things around here in Chile and in Argentina also that are named after uh, Bernardo O'Higgins. The main avenue that runs right here in front of La Moneda is uh, Avenida Bernardo O'Higgins. Uh, the military academy here in Chile is named after Bernardo O'Higgins. So, you know, O'Higgins, he's, he's really the one who gets all the tribute here. And it's only very recently that uh, um, Jose Miguel Carrera has gotten sort of the recognition that, uh, that, um, that he was also one of the founding fathers of the Republic of Chile. So, I guess that's it. That's the story. The crazy story of uh, Bernardo Higgins and Jose Miguel de Carrera, the two founding fathers of Chile, who absolutely hated each other. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. It, this originally wasn't going to be a video. Um, I was doing some research on, uh, like, the Battle of Rancagua, and because we had talked about that in some previous videos, and I wanted to do a video about that, but this story was just too crazy to um, to not make into a whole video. So there you go. The founding fathers of Chile, they hated each other, but they founded the modern republic of Chile, which we have been enjoying for the last month or so. So I guess thank you. Bernardo O'Higgins and thank you Jose Miguel, Ter Miguel Carrera. Um, you had a crazy story and it made for a really interesting video. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.